Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar showcasing the new features of the uh, 4D V20 R3. Uh, but before uh, getting started, we want to wish you all a very happy new year. So we are thrilled to have you here with us for this exciting session. Alongside with Mathieu, our head of product and the product team, we'll be sharing our selection of new features and answering all uh, your questions. So feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the questions and answers box on Zoom. And we are here to provide you with all the information you need. So as usual, this webinar is divided into several parts. We will start with significant innovations for developers. Uh, then we will discuss 4D Write Pro, 4D View Pro, and we will conclude with a focus on our latest product, Codely Studio. So let's get started. The features for developers, and I will hand over the floor to Matthew. Hello, everyone. And uh, as Intisa said, uh, we wish all of you uh, a happy new year and a, a lot of success for, for this new year. So let's start with improvements in the language. Since 4D V20 R3, you are now able to declare and initialize variables in a single line. This allows you to write more concise and readable code. Previously, you could already declare a variable and specify its type, but now you can directly provide an initialization value with or without indicating the type of the declared variable. If you initialize a variable without specifying its type, 4D will determine the variable's type based on the initialization value. It's recommended to use this approach exclusively with scalar types derived from values, commands, or methods, this to avoid surprises. For more precision, you can also explicitly define the type of the declared variable while initializing it. This is recommended for complex types such as classes, for example. The key takeaway is that if you omit specifying the type while initializing the variable and the compiler or the interpreter cannot determine it, the variable will be considered as a variant type. So this is very important. So you have here several examples of how you can declare a variable. So first line with a type, second line only with a value, and the type will be determined by 4D. And on the last line, you specify both types and value. That's it for this new feature. You can consult the blog, which link is, uh, is shown uh, below. So let's go to the next feature. And we'll continue with improvement in the 4D language. And we'll talk today about variadic functions. We have simplified the declaration of methods or functions that accept an indeterminate number of parameters. You can now use the three dot symbol in your last parameter to indicate that the number of parameters can vary. This enhancement makes your function and method declarations simpler and easier to use. So here, Oh, there's a hiccup. It's still in French, but I will translate it to you. Uh, you have here a sum numbers method that will add all the numbers passed in parameters. So you have here in the prototype after the DS declare, you have dash declare, sorry, uh, you have the three dots and the type is specified. These are, these are for real numbers. So this method can be called with a variable amount of parameters. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. It will return 15. With this syntax, 4D checks now all parameter types for you. So if you try to pass a text uh, string in this, uh, in this call, 4D will return an error. But you can also just omit 
the type in your declaration. So just passing three dots and then it's up to you. You can pass any type you want and any amount of parameter. So that's it for this feature. If you have some questions, don't forget you have the Q&A uh, panel where you can ask your questions and we'll answer that. So let's go next. And now we'll talk about incremental synchronizations with global stem. So before going further into details, let me explain what we mean here by global stem. A stem is a marker. It's a tool used to track data modifications on entities. So it helps maintain an history of changes made to your data. We introduced these global stems with 44 Mobile a while ago to enable incremental synchronization between 4D and mobile devices. So now we are making this functionality available for your other needs. In practical terms, with Global Stamp, you can easily update and synchronize data by transferring only the changes made by the last synchronization. To use this feature, you can see the little clip on the left, you first need to activate it on tables that you consider relevant for this. So you will notice, don't be surprised, that 4D then enhances your structure with a global stamp field and a deleted records table. So you can see that on the left. And then you just need to be to use intelligently two new functions, get global stamp and set global stamps. So we'll run a little example for that. So let's suppose you want to get data modifications since the day before, since yesterday, for example. So first, you need to store the current global stamp for a future use. This is done here in step one with the get global stamp function. Second step, you're the next day. <clears throat> you retrieve again this uh, global stamp. You retrieve the global stamp you stored the day before. And you just have to run step three, a query that will compare the current global stamp the current global stamp with uh, the one uh, you retrieved the day before. So this will get you the list, the entity selection of entities that were modified since the day before, since the previous global stamp. And then you're ready to synchronize anything. Step four, there's a simple way also to retrieve the deleted entities for this table from the day before, from the previous global stem. So this feature, it puts you in control in a world where precise and fast data synchronization is often crucial. Now you can quickly implement incremental synchronization mechanism. You can use it, for example, to incrementally synchronize two for the applications. The second server, the one that you need to synchronize, uh, can query the first one via REST or through a remote data store or any other means allowing you to execute the simple queries that you have in front of you. So that's it. Any questions you have, the blog post or the Q&A panel. Let's go. Let's now discuss a different type of synchronization. 4D enables you to work efficiently with collections of objects, simplifying tasks such as sorting, ordering, and filtering. However, when data arrives from, from a non-4D system in forms of multiple arrays, for example, it can be tedious to convert them into collection of objects for manipulation. In 4D V20R3, the new function multi-sort simplifies the sorting and synchronization of multiple collections, making data manipulation more efficient. Let me provide you a bit more clarification. If you are manipulating a collection of objects, you can, you might not need, sorry, this kind of uh, function. You can just sort on an attribute of the object and it will synchronize the whole collection. It will sort uh, the collection accordingly. 
However, a developer in our forum raised an interesting situation. It's sometimes not straightforward to create a collection of objects to manipulate. For instance, when data comes from a non-4D third-party system or a REST API, you might receive, for example, five, six lists of scalars instead of just one list of objects. And if you need to return these five lists, it might not need very efficient or necessary to, to go through a list of objects. So it's simpler in this case to use the multi-sort function and just sort the five lists independently, but in a synchronized way. This is what the multi-sort function allows you to do. That's it for this feature. Let's go next. And now we'll talk about the use log file option. In 4D v20R3, the log management is updated to provide more configuration options for develop for deployment. Sorry. You can now override the use log option like other backup parameters. This function, this option, sorry, determines if your application uses a log. When enabled, 4D prompts you to create or select select sorry a log when creating a new data file, storing the log path in the data file. If you open a data file without a log, and this option is enabled, 4D asks you to create or select a log. The use log option is saved by default in the catalog file. However, with 4db20r3, you can now modify this option during deployment using the backup parameter file. You can place this parameter in the structure or next to the structure or next to the data. Regarding user interface, there's no change in the structure settings. The use log parameter continues to be saved in the catalog file. In practical terms, this allows you to define a differentiated log policy between your development environment, where you might prefer to work without a log, and your production environment or your client's production environment, which requires a log. Okay, that's it. Once again, once again, sorry, more details in the blog. Next feature about VS Code extension. <clears throat> 4 dv 20 r 3 enhances support for Visual Studio Code through the 4D Analyzer extension. This is a highly useful feature as it allows you to access 4D documentation directly from VS Code. Even if you are familiar with 4D commands and classes, having a comprehensive information while developing is often beneficial. So starting from v20r3, it's quite simple. You hover your mouse over the command class or class method for which you want documentation, and a tooltip appears. At the bottom of this tooltip, a link indicates the show documentation link. You can click on it, and you reach the 4D documentation. <clears throat> and let me quickly revisit 4D v20r2 because it introduced the code formatting. So if you used 4D with uh, VS Code, when well, if you use VS Code to code some 4D method or classes, you might have noticed that the code formatting didn't precisely match the style used in 4D. This was prior v, uh, 4D v20R2. But now using the format feature of VS Code, you can format your code in the same way as 4D does it. Okay, that's it for this code. Let's go next. <clears throat> for DV20R2 marked the launch of the first NetKit function supporting Google's Gmail API and specifically for R2, the sending of email. With 4DV20R3, we are introducing commands to retrieve label lists extract emails, and delete email. We are in the process of completing the work on Gmail to achieve the same level of service as for Office 365. This will enable you 
to support both ecosystems very easily and with minimal changes to your code. So here, an example in front of you, this demo app, this how do I is available in the blog post where uh, that we provide you the link for at the bottom of this slide. So that's it in this demo, you can synchronize, you can retrieve the emails from any Gmail mailbox. That's it, let's go. We continue with emails. In response to your request on the forum, we are introducing a new command to address your needs regarding the is red flag, for example, in emails. With the release of 4db20r3, 4dnet kits now allows you to modify various properties of received and drafted emails using the office 365.mail.update function. Thanks to the Microsoft Graph API, this function enables the modification of multiple attributes of an email. But please note that certain properties, such as the body text or the subject of the message, can only be modified if the email is in draft status, obviously. You cannot modify an email that would be already sent. As you can see, we continue to make progress in supporting both Gmail and Microsoft APIs. On this note, I would like to make a quick comment. Even though for the ISU, most of the differences between the two ecosystems, you will notice that some specificities remain. For example, we discussed a few minutes ago about labels or Gmail, and labels is a Google-specific features that replaces folders in Microsoft 365. While an email can only be stored in one folder in Microsoft, Google allows applying multiple labels of the same email. Mm -hmm. And this kind of difference will be reflected in the 4D NetKit API. So most of your code will can be very similar, very identical, but once you start using folders with Microsoft or labels with Google, of course, you will have differences. Okay, let's proceed. Let's proceed with WebSocket. So today we are in an internet interconnected world and the demand for real-time updates is crucial for website, but also for IoT applications. One way to provide instant information to your websites or applications is done by using the WebSocket protocol. This protocol establishes a full duplex communication channel between a server and a client. Starting from, V20, from 4D V20, you can create a WebSocket server using the 4D.WebSocket server class. With 4D V20 R2, the 4D WebSocket class allows you to create a WebSocket client to connect to your server or to connect to any WebSocket server for the unknown 4D. With 4D V20 R3, you can now send security details, application specific data, or any other relevant information to the server using the WebSocket client headers. When implemented a WebSocket, uh, when implementing, sorry, a WebSocket client, you need to create a class to handle its events. This class now introduces a header attributes. And with this attribute, you can have a flexible way to manage and customize WebSocket client headers according to your need. You can see it on your screen here where we sent an authorization token in the headers. That's it for WebSocket clients. And well, WebSocket is a very wide topic. So if you need, or if you want more information, you can deep dive in these Thomas Small sessions uh, that were organized by the 4D method. It's a very, very interesting session. So I re strongly recommend it to you. So that's it for development. Let's now move on to the new features for 4D Write Pro and 
it's up to you, Intisara. Thank you, Mathieu. Uh, so we will start with the first uh, feature of for the right pool, which is uh, assigning names to formulas. Uh, so previously, formulas could be displayed as values, expressions, or symbols, making sometimes uh, readability uh, challenging. With the R3, you can now assign names to formulas. This makes your for the right pro, uh, templates more intuitive. Uh, by allowing users to quickly identify and understand the purpose of each formula in uh, the document, uh, which facilitate eventually the work with templates and enhancing the overall uh, user experience. Um, two commands, WP insert formula and WP uh, git formula have been revised and improved to support uh, this new way of displaying uh, formulas. Uh, here you have the blog post if you need uh, more information about these features. And the next one. Sorry, I missed the video. <laughs> no. no, it's okay. <laughs> I yeah, so I this is a video from How Do I that is available on the 4D blog that shows how the feature actually uh, works. And if you have any questions regarding 4D Rights Pro, we have our wizard, Roland Lanizel, who will gladly answer all your questions. Yeah. So uh, the next feature is uh, the export PDF app format. So actually the PDF format has, uh, has become a classic choice for exporting 4D Rights Pro documents and has, uh, has been available uh, for some time uh, now. But starting from the R3, uh, there is a very interesting uh, new addition, the PDFA format. So while this new format is optional, but it opens up possibilities for future applications such as electronic invoicing, a feature that you will find in uh, the current release, which is the R4. Uh, so you can export your uh, for the right pro documents to the PDFA format in the usual way either through the interface or uh, by code. Uh, both methods are straightforward, and you can choose between the latest formats, such as uh, PDFA2 or PDFA3. Um, so just uh, a side note, apart from electronic invoicing, uh, the PDFA3 format is recognized as a standard for document archiving, ensuring that your documents will remain accessible for many years. Um, and the PDFA3 format also allows you to embed additional documents into your PDF. Uh, imagine being able to archive your uh, PDF purchase order with the, the commercial proposal, sales visuals, and any other useful documents. Uh, you will be able to do all of this very easily uh, starting from the R4. And as we didn't have a webinar for uh, the R2 due to the 4D Summit, today actually you have a two-in-one webinar and we take this opportunity to present you with some new features of the R2 and this functionality is one of them. Um, so in recent versions of 4D Rights Pro, many features related to tables have been added. It's now possible to easily create tables uh, based on database data using context, data sources, and formulas. These tools are powerful, but are intended for developers. For end users, it's, it's a different story, especially without in-depth training uh, on data sources or formulas. That's why we introduced a robust solution in the R2, which is the table wizard. So the table wizard, to summarize, is a user-friendly tool accessible to end users, allowing them to fully benefit from templates provided by a developer tailored to their specific use cases and business needs. When configuring the templates, user can perform the following actions. Define tables and fields, translate table, field, and formula names, prepare business adapted formulas, and design uh, graphical uh, styles. Um, so feel free to read the blog post and watch uh, the demonstration uh, available on YouTube. You will find all the link in the presentation that we will send you later. And speaking of tables, 
Speaking of tables, they are very essential for organizing and presenting information in for the right pro documents. And with R2, an interesting, another interesting improvement has been made to facilitate the organization and presentation of data in tables, which is the ability to merge cells. So regardless of how you use tables, whether they are filled in automatically or manually, the ability to merge them offers significant advantages. Table cells can be merged horizontally across all or part of a row or vertically across all or part of a column. It's also possible to create uh, blocks of cells. This can be done either through the user interface, via standard actions, or uh, programmatically by code. So that will be all for, for the right pro. Yeah, we move. Let's move to the new features of 4D View Pro. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, so I will let the team handle the answer and I will go forward in the presentation. So for those of you handling uh, large and complex 4D view pro documents, we introduce the SGS file format in 4D uh, V20R2. And this format provides both better import and export performance and also uh, occupies much less uh, disk space. Uh, improvements continue with the R3, with the introduction of a new billow format that allows you to store compressed documents in your database offering the same performance at the SGS format delivered in the R2. It's finished with you, Pro. So we have one question, I think it's for Right Pro. The first one, how many lines per table are there? Um, I would not want to say uh, anything wrong, but if I remember well, it's uh, 1,000 for lines. Um, but we are working in increasing this limit. Um, another question, the new import and export commands of View Pro are asynchronous, yeah. If one needs to perform a synchronous, a synchronous export to Blob, for example, for example, I want to ensure that the View Pro sheet is saved in a blog in the current record before accepting a form. What strategy do you recommend using? Well, wow, nice. Nice question for View Pro. So perhaps Fabrice or I see uh, Roland is answering, but uh, perhaps Fabrice will uh, will answer as well. And we have a thank you for the SJS format. So you're welcome. Okay, I was right about the one thousand lines limit. But as I said, it will be increased. Okay, let's continue this presentation. Question can still arrive. We still have some time. And now let's move on to Codly. So Codly's journey continues with R3. Although we are currently in developers preview phase, each partner already has the opportunity to test those new features and this new product. Your feedback is especially valuable and eagerly anticipated. We are already receiving very positive feedback for, for this new product. We are very glad to do that. And uh, it's, it's very positive. We are very happy about that. Before describing the new features of uh, Codely Studio for R3, I would like to remind a little bit about the offer as we presented it uh, during 4D Summit. So Codely Studio, it's a product that you can use both, uh, you can use uh, in two different ways. You can use it with 4D by using Codely Studio for 4D. So it's, you, you receive it with the 4D you know. So R2 or now R3. Uh, with, with this product, you will work with your 4D application. You will be able to create 
web forms and to create web applications uh, in parallel to your 4D desktop application. So you can run this web application in parallel of your 4D desktop application. It will be plugged, it will work with the same data. The language you use is obviously the 4D language. Anyway, your code is run through REST API. So what does uh, Codely Studio is running, calling uh, your code through the REST API. So you, the language, it's still 4D. You're, you, you will leverage your business logic with this. And regarding the hosting, it is self-hosted. No change about that. You still host your application as today. So this is Codely Studio for 4D. But there's another way to use Codely Studio. This other way is by subscribing to Codely.com. So you open an account, you create an account on Codely.com. So this is for new projects because you won't be able to run your 4D application in Codely.com. And you will be able to do 100% web application with this. So because Codely Studio, Codely.com, sorry, does not support for the desktop uh, features. The language you will use is Codely Script there. Codely Script is very close, very similar to the 4D language, but it's also very similar to JavaScript. So you will find in Codely Script, you will find again, of course, uh, order, uh, you will find your entities, your entity selections, your data store, and so on. Okay, so very similar to 4D, but also very close to JavaScript. And the big difference also is regarding the hosting. So the hosting for a Codely.com app is in the cloud, and we take care of the hosting for you. You don't have anything to install, to configure, to set up. So these are the main differences between this, uh, for this same product and the same, let's say, the different usage you can do uh, for, for Codely Studio. So with 4D or in our cloud. Um, other differences uh, regarding the licensing, uh, the costs. With Codely Studio for 4D, you need 4D client licenses. And with 4D.com, uh, Codely.com, uh, you will have to subscribe. Uh, and it will be a monthly subscription that we will unveil in a very short time. So that's it. That's it for both ways of using Codely Studio. Let's continue now with some new features for Codely Studio in 4DV 20R3. So the V20 R3 was released very shortly after the launch of Codely Studio uh, for, uh, for 4D in R2, and it occurred in R2, just before the summit. So we have major developments in the product that will come in a, in a later time with R4, with R5. Nevertheless, we have already in R3 some enhancements with, uh, for Code Studio, some in interesting enhancements for Code Studio. The first one is about formatting durations. So you can already do a very efficient and very nice formatting for numbers, for text, for dates. And we wanted to improve the duration formatting. So we have here several examples for duration formattings here, simple or distance or distance with suffix, etc., etc. And you have here the result on the right of that kind of formatting. So the interesting thing is that it's done for you. It's available out of the box, that kind of formatting, and you can have interesting results with it. Some other improvements are done in the properties panel. So two interesting enhancements. Now in the properties panel, when you set in Codely Studio some, some specific values, uh, some specific design values such as width, such as height, etc. Uh, we ha we ha you have in the properties panel a lot of settings and sometimes it can be hard to go back to uh, the default value. So here you can directly reset the value of it with, uh, with this simple shortcut. And another enhancement is uh, regarding how your images will be 
display how they will fill the image component. We now have a new property called object fit that will define how the image will fill your image component. So by filling it or by stretching it, stretching it and so on. Some other improvement, we improved the uh, tab menu here with some icons, some more so with some clearer icons for ergonomy. We, you can also now execute your methods uh, from uh, directly from the method tab. And we reviewed uh, again for ergonomy, the creation of new, uh, of new files. Uh, what you have to, let's say, take away from this is that we are still constantly improving fine tuning the ergonomy and the robustness of the of the product but still we have some major feature coming you will be very surprised with uh, with what uh, with what is coming with Codly studio so in the meantime you have a lot of content available in our blog uh, here i present three of them but uh, but there are much more uh, we embark on our public journey with this kind of exceptional video training. Uh, here you have long content. Uh, our trainers, our experts will guide you through the technical aspects and will demonstrate to you how easy it is to quickly create a web, a business web solution with Codely Studio. I really recommend both uh, IUB's uh, sessions. Uh, the first steps with Codely Studio or the data table session. These are long session. We are talking about a, it's a one hour a full training uh, about uh, Codely Studio. It's very in interesting and it will give you very interesting, very useful uh, tips and tricks of uh, how to use the product. Um, the last, the last uh, topic here, you will find it in the blog. It's about entity selection and collection. It's a very nice uh, demo and a very nice use case about how to use entity selections and collection in Codely Studio, how to manipulate them, and you will see how easy it is. So I strongly recommend you to check out all of these contents. They are very interesting, very, very valuable. That's it about Codely Studio. Now maybe you have some question about it. Can I use Codely with 4D server? Um, in fact, you use Codely Studio with typically a 4D uh, standalone uh, in uh, the 4D IDE. Uh, so this is how you develop. And of course, when you deploy your 4D application done with Codely will run with 4D server. So we, you will... Uh, your application is hosted with 4D server. This is how it is intended to be used. Does Codely support Asian languages? I guess yes. It's uh, uh, there's no. Uh, it depends on uh, what you what you mean about supporting Asian languages. But we we already run. Uh, you can type uh, Asian uh, labels and so on, and uh, we already. Uh, let's say, uh, made some tests with uh, with uh, Asian alphabets and so on. So yeah, check it out if you find something that does not work or that should be improved. Uh, cool. You can uh, you can warn us, but uh, yeah, it should work. It is based on the test we did. Fabrice is answering the blog question. Perfect. I will a little bit continue because we don't have a lot of questions. So uh, let's continue with uh, some other information. So for those of you who missed the 4D Summit in October, we want to remind you that two key contents are now available for everyone. So first, the replay of the keynote is accessible for free on our 4D software channel on YouTube. And this video offers an exclusive 
overview of the cutting edge technologies we presented there. Additionally, all masterclasses are now available. They have been added to your local 4D store shelves. To find them, just visit the on-demand training tab. We wanted to ensure that if you couldn't attend to the summit, you still can benefit from these valuable materials to learn more from the experts, to add new features and enhance the value of your business application. So don't miss out these fantastic resources that will help you as a for the developer. Still time for question. Okay. So more, more information on the blog. Uh, we have some additional question here. The question is, can the database developed on Codly be ported back to 4D server? Interesting question. So it's not automatic, that kind of uh, porting. Uh, as I said, the um, uh, language, when you use Codly Studio on the cloud, so when you use Codly.com, in fact, uh, the application you create, the language is a Codly script, for example. So to port it back to 4D, well, you have to convert your Codly script to 4D language, for first example. Also, the model is not done exactly the same. Uh, you, you work with a database model on Codly.com and you work with a 4D structure, database structure with 4D. So this, you have to rebuild your structure. So it's not, it's still possible. The web forms by themselves are compatible. You can copy paste them, but the rest of it, the rest of the application is a little bit different. So today it can be ported, but it's your work. It's not automatic. Are there methods to sync, to synchronize the database between Codely and 4D server? Um, to sync, you could use, um, uh, for example, perhaps the stamp uh, feature that I showed you uh, earlier in this presentation it could be a way to, if you really want to synchronize data. Otherwise, uh, you will soon be able in a, in a very next release, maybe a four, maybe a five, you will be able to, to, to open a remote data store directly. So databases will not be synchronized, but you can open uh, a 4D uh, uh, remote data store from a Kodi application, Kodi.com application. So this is a way to to get get in our cloud uh, some some 4D data, some 4D server data. Uh, otherwise, any typical synchronize database synchronization is uh, is possible. If you have some specific need here. Uh, or if you want more details about uh, how to proceed, you can ask us on the forum and, uh, and uh, we'll answer you. But there are ways. Okay, the blob, the blob question was answered. And you need to use callbacks. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, difficulties about this uh, loading uh, of blob in uh, in view pro uh, we'll uh, we'll check this out in the forum thank you for the link okay the last question is a, a thank you so thank you you're welcome i guess if we have no more question i guess we can close this meeting uh, we wish you a happy new year and a lot of success. See you later in the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.